Good afternoon and welcome to Saints Peter and Paul. We're so glad to welcome you today, especially those who are visiting this weekend. And today we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And so let us stand together and pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit that can be found on the cards in the hymnals. Holy Spirit, may the same fire of love which inflames the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary inflame our hearts so that through prayer and boldness in word and ministry, everyone in our parish and our local community will encounter Jesus, grow in faith, witness the faith in word and deed. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O oh God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. And we ask that you please replace the cards in the hymnals where today's readings begin on 1004. 1004. Now please join in singing our gathering hymn, number 760, as we gather at your table. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we acclaim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us Christ your great compassion to forgive as you forgave. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. Gracious Spirit, help us summon other guests to share that feast. We're triumphant, love will welcome those who have been last and least. Then no more will it be blind us, nor will pride our peace destroy. As we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding joy. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind God's mercy and love. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
<laughs> Let us pray. O God, you manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that, that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as his spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who, was the young, who from his, his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that, would that all the people of the world of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Through your servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping Yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. From wanton sin especially restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot, cause, foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenchable. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine you're a tour guide for about 50 people. Well, exactly 50 people, I should say. And you go off to a big city, and as you're touring the big city, all of a sudden, you're able to go and see a play. And not, not any play, I mean, this is like the world famous whatever play. And it just so happens it fits your time schedule and it fits your budget. 
there's only one catch. You only have 48 seats available. What do you do with the extra two? That the two can't make it. Are you going, obviously you probably draw, you could just say no one's going, and that's not going to be very nice because, hey, this is a great play. But if you're missing out the other two, then they're going to be upset at you. And if they have friends and family on this, uh, this trip, they'll get upset too. That's really what Moses is dealing with. Because Moses has been complaining to the Lord, hey, I need some help here in, in guiding the Israelite people. And so God tells him, fine, here, bring 70 people up, elders up, to the mountain of Horeb, and I'll share some of my spirit with them, and they'll be able to help you. It'll be great. The only problem is, is what's 70 divided by 12? It's uh, 5 with 10 left over. Well, there's 12 tribes of Israel, and obviously we can't shortchange one tribe over the other, so everybody wants to send six, but you can't have six. Two tribes have to be left out. One person on, from each, those two tribes have to be left out, and so therefore, they must have drawn by Lot and left Eli and Medad in the camp, even though they were chosen. And I could see Moses thinking, oh no, what's going to happen? Are the people in those two tribes going to lynch me? Are they going to be upset because I didn't get six where everyone else got six? And so that's the background to what's happening. So the 70 elders go and receive the Spirit. They prophesy and they're all strengthened to go and help Moses. But God, even though these two weren't on the list, they're the two that we remember. They're the two names we remember. They're the two that uh, go and proclaim and prophecy. And so then Joshua says, well, stop them. And I can think of uh, Moses saying, why would I? There are two more helpers for me. There are two more people who have received the Spirit to go and lift me up and to go and do the work of God. Why would I squelch that? Much like in the gospel reading, the, the apostle, someone's driving out demons in Jesus' name, and the apostles are saying, no, we, no, we can't have that. And Jesus says, whoever is not against us is for us. I was thinking, what would happen if someone from our congregation started to cast out demons? And you know how hard it is to get, get around and cast out a demon. First, I have to interview the person. Then I have to kick it up to the diocese. Then I have to go back and interview the person. Then I have to get a psychiatrist to go and interview the person. Then I have to go back to the diocese and get a scheduling for an exorcist. And then I have to be with the exorcist. And the, it's not a one and done. It's a multi-month process, if not multi-year process. And somebody's going to do that for me? <laughs> of course, <laughs> let's go. I'm more than willing to have someone else do that. And I'm more than well, willing to have someone else do all the things I don't want to do. And I think that's the rub. I like to get delegate, and I like to have help in, in giving things that I know that I don't like to do or I'm not good at. But then when there's something good, am I willing to give it up? In the second reading, Paul is talking about, uh, you know, your, your riches rot away and, every, and uh, wealth just doesn't last all that long. And I, I pride it to the ministries that I do. I've known people in parishes where there are pillars of the community, of course, but they never ever shared anything. They never ever wanted to have any help. And so when suddenly they have an, a health incident or they suddenly die, everybody's like, what'd they do? What did, is it? Where is it? Are we willing to give that up as well? Are we willing to give up what we have? Because there's other people on the list. We have the list of people who could do what? But God has the ultimate list. He has the ultimate list which might have names that we aren't even aware of just yet. 
names of saying that if we are willing to let go of something that we treasure, someone else will step up. Are we willing to, be the, to allow the Holy Spirit, which is in each and every one of us by our baptism and confirmation, to allow those gifts to shine, not only in ourselves, but in those around us? Are we willing to, to allow others to get, do what we do? As we are giving things up, we know that God will give us the grace to do something wonderful in return as well because then may we be challenged. May we do something that the Spirit leads us to. I believe in one, one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made, for us men for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and, became and became man. man. For a seeker is crucified on Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered he death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, day in accordance with the scriptures. scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand, hand of the Father. Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his king will have no end. no end. I believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We bring all our petitions before our Heavenly Father. That the prayer and worship of the church may inspire her members to live their faith more fully each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the leaders of the world may seek the counsel of the Holy Spirit and make their decisions for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That Christians everywhere will embrace their call to seek greater justice in our world where the life, dignity, and right of the, uh, rights of the born and unborn are respected and defended, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That our parish community will, will constantly give witness to the message of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who are sick or who suffer in any way, that they will be comforted, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who have died believing in Christ may enjoy the glory of the heavenly kingdom, including Norma Foley, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all our petitions, for they're offered through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O merciful God, grant that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. By ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. With the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Oh! 
kingdom come, and I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. You should enter under my roof. Say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, there I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit me not that I should ever be separated from Thee. Amen. God's love is perfect, refreshing the soul, reviving the weary spirit. God's rule can be trusted, bringing us wisdom, bringing God's wisdom to Richer than gold. 
Let us pray. O Lord, may this heavenly mystery restore us in mind and body, so that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
few announcements. Uh, this Friday, October 4th, we will celebrate the blessing of animals in honor of the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi at 1.30 p.m. in the lower field with the school students and again at 6.30 p.m. in the main parking lot. And next weekend is our annual life chain from 2 to 3 p.m. along Vandalia Street. Please plan to join us for this public and prayerful witness to the sanctity of human life. And finally, this weekend, the church celebrates Priesthood Sunday. So we wish to thank Father Mike for his dedication to priestly ministry and pray for him today and every day. And if you did not know it, Friday was his birthday. Uh, okay, I'm old. <laughs> Actually, also uh, wanted to invite all uh, couples uh, married 25 years and longer to the uh, uh, anniversary mass tomorrow at 1030. And so there will be food afterwards. So uh, that's a, another wonderful vocation that people, many people are called to. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Change our hearts this time. Your word says it can be. Change our minds this time. Your life could make us free. We are the people your call set apart for this time. Change our hearts. Brought by your hand to the edge of our dreams. One foot in paradise, one in the waste. Draw Change our hearts, change our hearts.